Hi, Derek. You're dressed like a folksy grandma today. A cowboy grandma. It's perfect for your record, I think. It's the cool grandma that takes you out for beer and mechanical bulls, maybe. So this new record, it's called Making and Then Unmaking, and it comes out in May. Middle May, yeah. To me, the songs feel really gentle and peaceful. Sometimes they're playful, other times they're somber, but always a touch of hope remains. What emotions do you associate the record with? I just had this conversation with someone where I feel like the record feels pretty encouraging or full of like desire, yearning, and optimism, but it's actually the lyrics are quite dark. So I feel like I sort of buried the content of the record, which is actually quite about loss and um, deals with breakups and changes and, and losing things. But it's sort of the delivery is more about like the desire to like keep looking and find something new, even though you've lost something. So it's not it's not like a Smith's record, you know, it's not like depressing and defeatist. It's kind of more about like that, like eternal search to keep going. So. I feel like it doesn't feel really sad, but I feel like when I like went back over the content of the record and looked, it was like actually pretty sad, um, like on paper. But I would say, yeah, it's more like, I don't know, a Joanna Newsom record or something where it is like a painfully sad experience, but you're like searching or you're, you're full of desire to like kind of either assess that or like move beyond it or both. Um, you're not just stuck in the like, the grieving of it. Are there any particular experiences that you think maybe inspired these emotions, even if it wasn't conscious? Yeah, I mean, it's in the title. It's a breakup record, first of all. Um, but also, I've, you know, moving into my 30s this year, I feel like it's the time in your life where you kind of like boil down, like, who's really showing up for you and who matters, you know, and like who is um, gonna stay and who's supposed to leave. And I feel like a lot of people, you know, like we're supposed to leave maybe. This deals with that a little bit. So um, yeah, just not only breakups, but friend circle changes and also societal changes, like what we've, what we've kind of worked towards as a civilization and then gets kind of collapsed, you know, like when we like left the Paris Climate Accord now we're going to go back into the Paris Climate Accord. Things are always kind of like going in and out of circles. The lyrics have a lot of references to nature. I was always inspired by nature. I grew up in the middle of the woods and also been listening to a lot of ballads from four or five hundred years ago ballads and uh, they all basically deal with nature in a certain way. You know, like very plaintive lyrics and very simple imagery and a lot of like steaks and sand and the salt sea foam and roses and green briars and things. I guess so it's like a mix of like what I've already been inspired by and then also like, yeah, trying to pay homage to like the ballad tradition. You describe your record as something of an Appalachian cowboy record. You've talked about your love of Appalachian folk, but what about the American West? Are you particularly inspired by cowboys? Well, I think that, you know, it's funny to me that like, yeah, the Appalachian thing I think is taken a big role with this record. It was kind of going to be something else in the beginning and then it turned into an Appalachian folk record but the cowboy thing was sort of one of my first ideas about this album and um I think it's quite funny to be a cowboy like Diplo sort of did it like last year in an album or something and Madonna has done it and um everyone Lil Nas X you know there's like I think as Americans and I could be wrong but I think as Americans we like think that the cowboy image is sort of like the most American thing so we kind of either like are fascinated by it or want to make fun of it or both like that's kind of where I am at right now. But I also feel like the people in Appalachia that I've been working with and singing with, 
especially some of the older folks that live in like North Carolina and Tennessee, um, they have a preoccupation with the American West because they're like kind of in the Blue Ridge area, but that's even like West for them. Like they call them Westerns, you know, Texas and further West than that and everything. So they even have this kind of preoccupation, but I think it's like an American, it's kind of like Hawaiian culture, you know, it's like one of those things that's like uniquely American, but also very strange. So, um, it's kind of there in the pedal steel. Like I knew for this album, I really wanted a lot of pedal steel. So it's like, that was one of the first things I'd kind of tracked. I had found this player in Grand Rapids to do pedal steel for me. And I also got um, someone in Nashville to do some pedal steel. So that was kind of like the first clue I had about this record is that I wanted pedal steel. So a large part of your career, you've drawn from genres far from what you're doing now. You've drawn from glitch, drone, noise, gamelan. Um, have you noticed anything about your experience with these genres alter your approach to the folk music you're doing now? Um, the people that I work with that make electronic music that have heard this album, this new record, have kind of said to me they think that it makes total sense because the electronic music I was making before was kind of scruffy or like dusty or sampled and had a lot of voice and like acoustic stuff going on. So they were like, of course you'd make a folk record that makes total sense. And then all of the like rock and rollers that I know are indie musicians or like instrumentalists that just play violin or something. They're kind of like, have heard this record and they're like, yeah, it sounds really electronic actually. Like it makes sense that, you know, it's like, sounds very like looped or like it has an electronic kind of computer vibe to it. Um, even though I went out of my way, like not to have any, um, like processing or editing or effects. This album's really dry. There's no reverb or delay really. Like maybe in like two places there is, but I really wanted to like take this really far and be like no electronic anything, no. And uh, it's in very few places on the record, like actually. But I think because that's kind of my context is like looping and sampling things on the computer for 10 years, you know, it's like gonna come up. There's a there's a feeling to the pieces. They're very like ostinato, they're very pulsing, you know, which was my way of trying to make simple folk melodies that were just repeated. But I think it also has that flavor, yeah, of like, electronic, like um, accident. <laughs> Do you think this process of thinking about your choice of instruments, for example, or your song structures in your folk music um, are you consciously thinking back to the ways in which you work with electronic music or is it more of an unconscious process? I think it's unconscious. I've also like changed my singing style in a big way and that was like a really conscious decision to start singing in my in my chest voice and not doing the like Tom York falsetto thing that I've done for so long because I think with my earlier pieces that made sense. Like it would be weird to have like throaty chesty thing going on with these kind of fractured glitch things but now I feel yeah I've changed my singing practice I sing differently yeah I think unconsciously I mean you know you kind of you you draw on where you come from and I've I've been editing things on a computer for like 15 years sounds so I think no matter what kind of project I make it would kind of be like slightly edited but I also think like Dolly Parton is way more electronic than me you know like she's in a giant studio with like engineers and she's all reverbed and airbrushed and edited together and she probably comps her takes like 50 different vocal takes you know so this was to me it was very like one take no effects arrange it make sure all the instruments are happy together and sound eq them so that they sound kind of like they came from the same place because you have pedal steel from grand rapids and like saxophone from iowa city and you know um, dulcimer from London and like you know they had to kind of all sonically make sense there's no like reverb and and like fattening or brightening of the sound I think like yeah Dolly Parton is way more of an electronic musician than I am at this point <laughs> so in what's maybe a peak point in your record you sing that you're a cyborg I think this would make sense coming from a folk musician that was born with and grew up with technology. To them, it's just an instrument in the same way that like any folk instrument from any folk tradition would be. 
Well, yeah, I guess folk is, you know, of the people and like, what are we all preoccupied with now as a society? Those like robot dogs from Boston Dynamics and AI and machine learning. I also thought it was just funny. Yeah, that's like the centerpiece of the record, that song, it's called The Steak. And um, it's probably the most emotional lyric I wrote on this record actually. And I wanted to just kind of like flip the whole album on its head for a second and say that I was a cyborg. I think that's one of the only places there's re reverb too. I think I say that I'm a cyborg and I added like a slap delay just to be <laughs> like underline really obviously that it's like a like a, a kind of a joke on the record because you have to step out of it somewhat a little bit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The rest of the record is pretty like pastoral. It deals with like a lot of like folk ballad tropes, cambric shirts and sand and stakes and things but i wanted one moment of like it's a it's a record from 2021 so it should have like a little stamp of modernity i hope it's not tacky i hope that doesn't come off like as a as like a weird tacky moment but it was like me having kind of a joke about the thing for a second and a cyborg. 